So welcome to the planning board meeting of Monday, April 1st at 6.35 p.m. Thanks for being patient, everyone. Emily, would you like to read the prelude? Sure. She loves that. <clears throat> this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting slash hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Et cetera. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, guidelines for business meetings. Speak one at a time. Follow Deerfield Code of Conduct. Be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and recognized by the chair. And all identified board members present. Kathy Watroba? Here. Rachel Blaine? Here. Emily Gaylord? Here. Andrew Liebson? Here. Kathy Sylvester? Here. Denise Mason here. And Satu Zoller is absent. Okay, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of February 5th? Yeah. Yep. If so, any additions, corrections? Um, uh, I have one, corre one correction. Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi, sorry. There's one correction under uh, point six. Um, Leibson reported that the OSRC, it's uh, Franklin Land Trust, Oh, no. not just Franklin Trust. Just want to be more specific. And trust. And I'm sorry, where is that? Uh, number six. Yeah, good point. Good catch. Um, number six. First. Thank you. Okay, do I hear a motion? I, I move that we accept the minutes as amended. With Rachel Blaine. Okay. Emily okay. Gaylord, second. All right, uh, vote Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, aye. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrew Leibson. Andrew Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, aye. And Denise Mason, aye. Okay, so new business. Special permit here in 10 Jones Hill Road. I'm assuming that's you. Okay. Um, so notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public meeting on Monday, April 1st, 2024 at 6.30 p.m., on an application filed by David and Martha Grace for special permit for proper li property located at 10 Jones Road, identified in the assessor's records as map 51, lot 24, to create an accessory apartment in a detached structure on a permanent foundation on the same lot as primary single family dwelling pursuant to zoning bylaw chapter 179, section 39, 3932. Application doc, Documents available for review at municipal town offices or online, www.deerfield.mass.us in the calendar event. And if you'd like to step up to the table, please, and the mics. Whoops. And tell us about your project. Yeah, we'd like to develop uh, an apartment in uh, an existing barn. Um, it's, uh, we've rehabilitated it. It was in bad shape when we moved in. And can I ask you just, you've got to speak like right oh, yes. like, so in here. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it's a rehabilitated barn and, uh, we'd like to develop uh, a guest room or apartment space in there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Just a one bedroom space, a studio with a bathroom, of course. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I understand that you already have, um, a structure there that has two bedrooms and that yes. there will be a deed that so that you are you'll you will not be able to add another bedroom to the existing structure is that correct, correct? Yes. okay yep the house um is was formerly considered a three bedroom and our septic system has the capacity for three bedrooms uh, but we only use two. We've had the assessor's office come out and confirm that. And we've also had a deed restriction written up, but we haven't recorded it yet. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for this meeting. Um, okay. But that would restrict the house to be only two bedroom. 
and that the other bedroom would be in this uh, apartment in the barn. Right. So if you ever did decide to sell, which I don't think you would, <laughs> that would that deed would hold. Yes. Hold fast. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I yes, exactly. Yeah. I believe that if we sold also the next buyer would have to have the ADU permit again approved by okay. the planning board. That's right. Okay, probably another Title Five. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um planning board, do you have questions? I I'm I, this is Andrea. Is there a, any kitchen facilities in this? Yes, yep. In the mm -hmm. second mm -hmm. May the first. Yeah. This is yeah. Kathy Sylvester. Um, any plans for like Airbnb or is this a long-term rental? No plans for Airbnb, um, but uh, especially for a guest room. But um, if we do have the ability for long-term renting mm -hmm. with the approval of the board, then that's something that we might pursue in the future. Yeah, you can do that with you just the you can't do the less than thirty day rental. Right. So I think that's what we would decide. Yes. Right, right, Rachel. Um, so good. Yeah. Glad that you're doing this actually. It's your fir the first one coming before us since oh. we changed the bylaw. So oh, exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> good timing. That's great. Rachel, do you have any questions? No, Emily, Kathy, Andrea. I answer. All right. Well, I'm gonna open that up to any public comment was yes sir if you could come up to the mic please i don't think it's necessary but i'll give you a little history um my wife and i bought a couple of properties on upper road in 1972 one of them abuts their land by about 900 feet um, when I, when I came here in 1972, long-term residents were lamenting then that their children couldn't afford to live in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the housing stock. Mm -hmm. We've all seen the statistics in the, in the paper over the last two months on housing in the state, on the state level. They managed to sue one city back east because they were being exclusive, exclusionary. Mm -hmm. When the state does that, well, you know, it, it takes you, it takes everything away from you and the state controls that. Um, we're still in that position where we're not, as a, as a town, we're not doing great. Right. And, you know, we've talked about it for decades and mm -hmm. we're still not doing great. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a sweet, small alternative yeah. And it's a neighborhood that, you know, I've known people that lived there in the 40s and there had off and on since World War II, there had been families combining and separating in, in dwellings. Um, so it's nothing new to West Deerfield. Uh, and um, I, I, I toured the space the other day and it's going to be a nice, pleasant um, space for some for a person no that's great so i i'm just speaking in favor of thank you okay good thank no you're right we do i'm sorry and, and can you state your name please for the record you need your name. oh your name sir william cummings cummings okay. so kathy thank your, you your hero on this one yeah kathy sylvester <laughs> i'm working on it and senior <laughs> senior housing next so that'll free up some other houses and yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I think the U a UMass study just said that uh, Franklin County is at a deficit of about tw at least 25, 2,500 homes. Yeah. So and, I know. And it's not, uh, I say this politely, it's not a developer coming in and catering to retiring right. faculty from the university. We need. Yeah. We need affordable housing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we need to disperse it as much as we can around the town. Right. For a well, neighborhood. and we are well aware of that yeah, and we're great. working on that senior okay. housing. So yeah, we're working well, hard. But thank you. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for speaking. All right. Um, so does anybody else, anybody online have a comment? No? All right. If not, I will close the public comment section of the public hearing and deliberation. Anybody have anything? Do I hear a motion? So can I just, this is a special permit. So we are approving a special permit. Yes. 
So I make a motion we approve the special permit. How fitting. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. That's Rachel Blaine. All right. Um, Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, aye. Rachel, Rachel Blaine. Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrew, Andrew Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. All right. Um, yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we just have before we close. Okay. We haven't closed the public hearing yet. And Andrew, would you read the conditions? Sure. And you'll get a copy of them too. Probably nothing you, you haven't already heard. These are the conditions um, specified by the planning board. General conditions. Number one, the applicant is responsible for obtaining all permits, approval, and licenses from other town departments and regulatory bodies as appropriate. Number two, the appointed agent for the planning board shall be the building commissioner. Number three, if anyone wishes to appeal this action, an appeal arising out of the elements of this de decision that is derived from the zoning bylaws must be filed pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 17, within 20 days of the date that this decision was filed with the town clerk. Number four, following the 20-day appeal period, a certified copy of the special permit decision from the town clerk's office shall be recorded at the Franklin County Registry of Deeds at the owner's expense. A copy of the recorded decision shall be filed with the building inspector prior to the issuance of a building permit. Number five, this approval shall lapse if construction has not begun not yet begun within one year after the applicant has received all state, federal, and local permits. If the applicant for good cause needs to be granted extensions for periods of one year at a time for completion of the project, the applicant shall apply to the planning board for an extension prior to the ex expiration of the approvals. Pre-construction conditions. Assigned deed restriction limiting the total number of bedrooms for both the existing house and the proposed accessory dwelling unit to mo no more than three must be recorded at the Franklin County Registry of Deeds. Pursuant to Deerfield Bylaws Chapter 179, Section 3934, no building permit shall be issued for the proposed accessory dwelling unit without prior, prior approval of the septic system by the Board of Health. Great. Thanks, Andrea. Yes, and Amy will furnish a copy for you. Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, so do I hear a motion to close this public hearing? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Ms. Kathy Sylvester. Uh, Rachel Blaine, I second. All right. Kathy Wittrova. Kathy Wittrova, aye. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrew Leibson. Andrew Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. So the public hearing is closed. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. Thank yeah. you very much. I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Next. We're just remarking that it's so new that it's not even on the application. So on the application, with that special permit application, oh. it says ADU, it's written in. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. The, form's not the form is not updated. The form, yeah. it's like written ADU. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. You can check it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> All right. Okay, come on down. <laughs> yes. All right. You guys don't mind sh sharing mics here. Okay. If you guys could just sign in, I, I should have asked other people Sorry, to sign in too on that. Um, if, if folks could just sign in on that little sheet that's on the oh, table, right. oh, yeah, a piece of paper. Right, the Is people it? who are uh, just sign your name so we know who you are. Thank you. If that's your paper, yeah, that better. Yeah, if you could just. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Give you the There's one on the table that that can be signed. Oh, there is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, we, we missed. I missed. I did. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. That way, I'll get your names right. Okay. We're, yeah, we're all set, Amy. So I'm going to open the public hearing for 84 Greenfield Road. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Deerfield Planning Board will hold the public hearing. On April 1st, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. on an application filed by New Singular Wireless PCS LLC for site plan review for property located at 84 Greenfield Road, identified in the assessor's records 
As map 159, lot 16, to raise the existing communications tower by 20 feet, install an antenna at a height of 110 feet, install a walk-up cabinet inside an expanded compound, and to install a diesel generator next to existing Verizon generator pursuant to zoning bylaws, chapter 179. Application documents available for review in FOIA of municipal offices or online at www.deerfield. Dot ma dot us in the calendar event. All right, welcome. Okay. All right, would you like to tell us about your project? Yes, we'd love to. Um, uh, first of all, as a way of introduction, my name is Edward Parry. It's P A R E. I'm an attorney at Brown Rudnick. I'm here representing New Singular Wireless PCS LLC, which operates as AT and T. Uh, good evening, and thank you for having us this evening. Uh, we have. Uh, Frank Kelly is uh, from the site acquisition firm for AT&T. Our civil engineer is also here with us. Uh, so there is an existing tower at the south. Martin. Huh? Martin. Oh, and we and we have Martin, uh, our radio frequency engineer, Martin Laban, uh, okay. from C Squared. Can you speak a little closer to the mic? Sure. Yeah, for the Zoom people. Uh, so. AT&T has entered into a lease agreement with the South uh, Deerfield Fire District. Uh, there's an existing monopole located at the site at 84 Greenfield Road. Uh, if you've driven by, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, AT&T is proposing to extend the pole by 20 feet, attach its antennas, similar to what Verizon has done. Verizon is an existing carrier at the site. What we're going to do to mitigate any impact is to match the fencing that's at the base of the pole. Verizon's equipment is actually in that little shelter next to the pole. Uh, we're going to put, uh, extend the fence by three feet, three and a half feet. Uh, same chain link with the slats will match it. Uh, we're also going to install our gener backup power generator over at mm -hmm. 300 feet away over next to Verizon so that it mitigates any noise issues. Uh, we plan to test the generator at the same time that the fire uh, district tests theirs uh, in Verizon's, uh, so to the condition in the special permit. Uh, we're scheduled to appear before the zoning board on the 11th uh, for a special permit. So this evening we're here for site plan review. Uh, with that, I think we could be happy to answer any questions about the physical design or any background or information that any planning board members are interested in. Questions? I mean, I've read through everything and it seems it seems pretty straightforward to me and also there are federal, federal regulations that allow you to do this. It, it, there are, uh, but you know, out of respect for the local process, right. uh, we come to the planning board for site plan and we'll be at the zone, yeah. as I said, the zoning board. Uh, and in accordance with the zoning bylaw itself, co-location is obviously encouraged. Mm -hmm. uh, towns don't want more than one tower where, you know, it's not necessary. So uh, we get to co-locate. The fire district, you know, receives the benefit of having it in one location. Generators are there. It's, you know, it's a good sized lot. Um, it's going to have a pretty low impact, uh, it's, you know, with, except for the 20-foot extension, which will probably be unnoticeable once it's up and right. people used to driving by. Go ahead. So what is the purpose of doing it? Because what is it serving? Yeah, AT&T does not have coverage in the area. Oh. Uh, we do have some coverage maps if we want to put them up, but we're not anywhere in the area. So AT&T customers are not you know, going to get good service in that area. Uh, once we attach, AT&T will have you know, very good service in that local area. And when is that happening? Uh, well, the permitting process will take us a few months, so I'd say probably year end, possibly into next year. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Right, I know Mr. Walden, our building commissioner, is online. I don't know if do you have any comments, Bob? Uh, no, I really don't have any comments. Um, everything's pretty straightforward. I, I no comments. Right. We we talk. Yeah. I think there's something about a canopy, and so with this, the permission you haven't quite decided whether you want to put the canopy on or not. Yeah, we we had submitted some revised plans. I think Amy has that, yes. and hopefully she circulated them. So yeah. above yeah. the equipment cabinets themselves, there'll be a canopy just for any 
rain issues when the engineer right. comes in or you know if any ice accumulates on any of the antennas and falls so it's a safety thing it, it'll be within the uh fence compound it'll be above the above the equipment cabinets so you can put down the fans. So you should have the revised plans. Yeah. Yep. May I ask, is there a tower that's this height in our area now? Bob, do you know? Well, I don't know how tall the one is on the mountain, but I mean, in the, in the general area, there's tower towers, not not necessarily in Deerfield, but yes. Where do you have you? Had yeah, I mean, we have towers throughout, you know, throughout the area. This would probably be a pretty low tower in comparison. Right. We're typically on a Tower where we're trying to get a good foot, footprint of coverage, 150, 180 feet. The ones you see on the highway are probably up at 180, 190. Mm -hmm. Typical 140, 150. It's so not going to do a nice big pine tree tower. <laughs> it's going it's, it's to gonna look very much Thank exactly. You. Like <laughs> yeah, they're really they attractive. They do stand out. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, like I, a I appreciate thumb. the effort. Yeah. We'll punch. <laughs> 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 right, right. Yeah, I mean, I've read through it. I certainly don't have any questions or any issues with that. And I know I spoke with um, Mr. Walden about this. And once again, you know, federal law yeah. says that no laws or actions by any government, blah, 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 yeah. that we can't, you know, can't prohibit the place from their construction and modification. So, I mean, it, it seems pretty simple. All right. Um, I'm going to open this up to public comment. Yes, sir. If you can, yeah, just, just grab a mic. Picture. And then if you could please state your name and then also fill out your sure. piece of paper. So I'm Bill Swayze. I'm the, the fire chief here for the South Deerfield Fire District. Uh, it was our intent in 2017 when we installed that tower to go up an additional yeah. 20 feet. It was built to support this extension. It's going to bring additional revenue into the district, you know, helping out with our, our tax base. So I just wanted to represent the South Deerfield Fire District and say we're 100% in favor of this project moving forward. Great. That and was so at 17, did you say, though? 2017. 2017. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So can you can you tell me how I mean will it benefit benefit your communications? Uh, right now, the majority of our firefighters are on AT and T, and we've got horrible service right at our fire station and within it. So it'll it'll definitely assist us. Uh, a lot more people are walking outdoors. You know, we've done a lot more rescues with cell phones and GPS coordinates. Um, yeah. So we use CalTapa, which is an app, and it'll immensely help us with those rescues. No, that's great. Okay. Well, great, thank you. All right. Uh, anybody? Well, Martin, do you have anything to say? No? No, Martin's there for questions if we need them. You just hear Hank. We just out? try to be prepared. Okay. All right. Okay. Any anybody else in the audience who has any comments? No? Okay. If not, I'll close the public comment and we'll go to deliberation. Are you looking for a motion to close? Well, no, yeah, I mean, no, deliberating, no, I mean, I comment. could I close, close the public, public comment. comment. We don't have anything. Excuse me? Close, close the public comment. Period. Okay, I'll do it. How uh, about that we close public comment for this <laughs> public hearing? The special permit. <laughs> Emily Gaylor is second. Right. Kathy Watroba. Kathy Chobai. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine. Aye. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord. I. Andrew Leibson. Andrew Leibson. I. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester. I. Denise Mason. I. Okay. Now we can deliberate. Any. I was on the board when we did this the first time around. Oh yeah. Yeah. 2016. Absolutely. Because that's where we. In the. I don't know that you came here. Yeah, we I was going to say. But I... I was. I was at this hearing when Ron Bahan was. Zone it. Just zone board. C V A M. It's like old home week, right? Old home week, yeah. So I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. You may. So maintenance, who who monitors the structural integrity of this additional part, part of the tower and how often is it inspected? Uh, the structure itself? I, I'm not sure it's inspected. Not the structure itself, but the, the addition that AT&T is adding to it. 
Yeah, so AT&T monitors all of its sites 24/7. They have a network operation center. Okay. Uh, the structure itself, I don't, I don't know even you know AT&T's uh, extension, but we'll have to apply for building permit. Uh, we'll have structural to okay. present to, uh, I think it's Bob Walden, the yeah. building official. Uh, yeah, I've read this. I've read the the time, we'll, we'll undertake those. And if it's not up, they don't get the. It'll have to be. It's their business. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> So, yeah. It'll be a, it has to be in accordance with the building code, sure. which yeah. which Mr. Wall that I'm sure yeah. reviews yeah. our application for. Any other questions? Any? No. No. Do I hear a motion? Do you hear a motion? Um, to... Do you have to read these? Yeah, you probably should read the questions. Oh first. boy. Okay. Yes. So we didn't do that last time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is. I don't know if you need to read all okay. of this. Okay. Well, you tell me. Well, I mean, you're going to Yeah. It's like three pages of conditions that, you know. Why don't I read the general? Yeah, read the general and then you'll get a copy of this. So just to clarify, there are general conditions, there's pre-construction conditions, and there's construction addition. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Conditions. Right. And then uh, project completion conditions um we'll read the general ones we'll share the rest and i can even well if you don't mind having jones road i could just hand this to them no just them. go ahead yeah read the okay. general i mean the general ones are basically mm -hmm. they're basically the same all right yeah. general conditions for approval the applicant is responsible for obtaining all permits approval and licenses from other town departments and regulatory bodies as appropriate the appointed agent for the planning board shall be the building commissioner if anyone wishes to appeal this action and appeal arising out of the elements of this decision that is derived from the zoning bylaws must be filed pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 17, within 20 days of the date of this, that this decision was filed with the town clerk. Following the 20-day appeal period, a certified copy of the special permit decision from the town clerk's office shall be recorded at the Franklin County Registry of Deeds at the owner's expense. A copy of the recorded decision shall be filed with the building inspector prior to the issuance, issuance of a building <laughs> permit. <laughs> this approval shall last if construction has not yet begun within one year after the applicant has received all state, federal, and local permits. If the applicant for good cause needs to be granted extensions for periods of one year at a time for completion of the project, the applicant shall apply to the planning board for an extension prior to the expiration of the approvals. Those are the general conditions. There are pre-construction, construction, and um, project completion conditions that we'll share with you. I don't think it should be anything mind-blowing. We don't have any issues with the general. Or, yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. so, we'd all be hoarse by the end of the year. We have to read every single one. All right. Okay, so vote. Uh, accepting that this is a... Yeah. Put it to we have a vote. We have to vote. Excuse That's me. All. Move. Yeah, so we, I moved it. we moved it. We yeah. presented the. Go ahead. <laughs> Didn't I move? Did you move? I moved it. And then we read the conditions. Now we just need to vote. Oh, so, okay. Can, oh, sorry. Can someone say okay, that? I moved that we um, approve the special permit for 84 Greenfield Road. Sounds good. I'll second it, if, if I may, it's, it's actually site plan, though. That's the only I'm sorry, site plan review. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Stoning board. Special site it. plan review. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. SPR. Okay. Thank Emily you. Lord second. Kathy Wittroba? Aye. Rachel Blaine? Aye. Emily Gaylord? <laughs> Reliefs in aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. And Denise Mason, aye. All Thank right. You. Thank you all. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Well, that, that's... Let me give that to you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. It's like I'm going to be special. <laughs> And we don't forget, there. someone has a one of each tonight, so briefcase in the. Excuse me, sir. Is that yeah. someone else's briefcase? Well, you can oh, leave that, that there. I have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you.
Okay. Busy night. What happened to my thing? All right, we have um very well. That's very I know, I'm looking at my Okay, here it is. Okay. It's in so public hearing number three. <laughs> No, it's toasty in here. It's like possibly oh, better than this. All right. Okay. Hey, Amy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Thanks. Uh, would you mind enabling us to share the screen? No, not at all. Uh, Thank you. Two seconds to figure that out. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to open the public hearing for the Leary Lodge. Continue. Okay, you're good. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold the public hearing on Monday, March 4th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. on an application filed by the Town of Deerfield for Site Plan Review Amendment for property located 59 North Main Street, Map 168, Lot 128 for the addition of an underground cistern, an irrigation system to the parking lot and other improvements behind the main storefronts at the corner of North Main and Elm Streets pursuant to zoning bylaws chapter 179 and chapter 155 application documents available for review in foyer of municipal offices or online at www.deerfield.ma.us in the calendar event. All right. Would you like to give sure. your presentation? And can you, the mic right up so people and online can hear you. This is bringing up the presentation. Um, so my name is Jeff Squire uh, with Berkshire Design Group here um, on behalf of the town of Deerfield for design and uh, construction of the, the Leary Law. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you all again. Um, this is really just to provide you all with an update as to some modifications, changes, additions um, to the plan. Um, in general, it really looks and will function very much the same as what was previously approved. Um, and as Chris is going through this, um, you know, and ironically, we I'll certainly have to get into more discussion. The one thing you mentioned in the advertisement with regards to the cistern is probably the one thing that isn't going to happen for various reasons, but, um, there are a number, it is a stormwater thing between the Hampshaw, the adjacent property and how this interacts with that requirements. Um, I have to bore you with the details, but uh, certain, I'll sort of highlight some of the other changes, um, which include, um, I think one of the big ones, yeah, and I don't, you, I don't, Chris, you may just wanna sort of go through the first couple of slides. Sure. Um, that one. So this was just a rendering of the original and uh, the site plan that was approved uh, at the last meeting. Again, it, all of this effectively looks exactly the same. Um, if you go to the next sheet. So here, what I've highlighted really are the changes. Um, the most significant ones are really extending the project out to wrap around the corner so that we can improve the sidewalk at the corner of North Elm, or North, of Elm Street and North Main. Um, so improving, you know, the curbing and the parking lot, uh, the parking spaces along North Main, uh, new concrete sidewalk, um, you know, along that, uh, you know, whole stretch of, of roadway there. And then relocating the crosswalk that's currently sort of mid block in, um, and when you look at the common, roughly in this location right now, aligned with that sort of diagonal walkway as, it's not an ideal location for lots of reasons. So as part of this, we're able to move that to the north a little bit and align that in a place that makes a lot more sense. Um, can, I, can I ask a question about yes. that first? Because, okay, is, that's not under DOT. That section of road okay. is not okay. DOT okay. controlled, okay. right. Which is the other reason to do this. <laughs> right. Um, 
So yes, there's just improving accessibility and pedestrian connections. There's a small segment of walk that will extend into the common to reconnect up with the existing walkways, but all of that is you know part of the accessibility improvements. Um, to the north side of that uh, north main curb cut, we just reload. There were previously a couple of bike uh, loops uh, adjacent to the picnic tables. Um, sort of into the lot a little bit. There was a request to move those out toward the street and up along the sidewalk there. So we've re lo relocated those bike racks to that location, the bench and and everything is still uh, is still there. Um, and then the other big improvement is bringing in uh, water service from bo both North Main and then also from Elm Street into the site so that there is at least a uh, connection point for irrigation or watering if that becomes a, a need. Um, we're adding two water fill stations. There's one at the picnic table area, the other one at the raised crosswalk and the entrance to the to the brewery uh, potentially, but there's another uh, water fill station in that location. So that's the other sort of big, you know, site improvement that's that's been added to the project. Um, so yes, I think those are the the major highlights. The, the, the reason for the cistern, just to um, entertain you all, the reason for the cistern is that, um, so there, there was a lot of money that could have been spent on a you know underground you know collection system that would have been used you know a pump system would have had to been set up to pump for for an irrigation uh, in the future. The issue is that for that to benefit for that storage volume to benefit Hamshaw or any project over there, um, it would have necessitated that tank being empty at a at a storm event because that's when you do the drainage calculations you're anticipating there's going to be a certain a volume of space available for a storm event. And so we've done this in other projects and it means that you need to put a little weather station on it so that when in the event of rain or pending rain, it pumps the system out. And so that that volume is then available because otherwise that storm water doesn't have anywhere to go. So <laughs> it turned into a whole lot of parts and pieces that got expensive and that you know became a maintenance and management issue. And so um, we have subsequently, and, and the other thing was for us to catch up a little bit with the Hamshaw project to make sure that we could, you know, in fact, do everything that we, you know, need to do over there. Um, and so one of the benefits is that, you know, we have a subsurface system behind what they're proposing for an addition. What we're going to do is essentially it's a stone chamber system underneath the ground. We're just going to butt the stone up against the stone underneath the reservoir for the Horace parking lot. So there's going to be this giant storm reservoir below Hampshaw's parking lot that connects then to this entire Horace asphalt parking lot. So hydraulically, there'll be one, you know, large stormwater reservoir in this in this general area that will accommodate, you know, a, a lot of water. On so, Hampshaw property, though. What's that? It's on the Hampshaw property? Par well, their system is going to be the, on their property. Yep. But because everything is built in stone, you know, this, the what's below the porous, you know, asphalt yeah, is yeah. a large stone reservoir. Yeah. It's the same kind of stone that goes around their subsurface system. So we can just butt the two sort of stone, you know, surfaces against each other. So it's, mm. you know, effectively one giant stone, yeah, you know, stormwater reservoir. And Hamshaw has agreed to that? They, we've, we've been updating them with, you know, regards to process. And yeah, I mean, they were willing to share a cistern I think this is a much more, you know, palatable solution from their end, management-wise. Um, so it, you know, I think the net benefit is that there's going to be, you know, a lot, a lot of stormwater uh, volume potential between those two, these two projects. And this is a lot to do with the porous, porous surface too, but that, mm -hmm. that, exactly that, that, that's the issue. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, yes. Good. Yep. Yeah, if this was a traditional asphalt system, there's no to, way we'd be able to do that. You wouldn't have any way around it. Yep. No, that's great. And thank you for listening because I think there's a gentleman last time that did talk about moving the bike rack. So thanks for listening to him Absolutely. about that, yep. you know, for safety reasons. Yep. So that's good. And I'm pleased to see that we have more sidewalks <laughs> too. Yeah. Um, and we'll note that the other thing that I didn't highlight on here is we did add a number of other plants to the plant list. Um, we increased a bunch of the sizes. You know, we've, we've got a number of three inch caliper trees in places that we can. Um, so it'll be a much healthier, you know, more robust landscape when when all is said and done, which which would be nice. <clears throat>
Who is going to maintain the um, Mike? Mike. Uh, this is from Andrea. Who's going to maintain uh, the plantings and the <laughs> the the foliage? Evan. That way, Chris <laughs> can speak to that. That will fall to the town. DBW. Yes. As will the cleanup for the for the um, the parking lot. Right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And and it'll be interesting to see too with the forest service because that is always one of the concerns with the forest service is the maintenance, general maintenance and snow coverage, how to clear it. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I live on Grave Street and I'm very excited about the crosswalks because walking <laughs> through the common is like a labyrinth mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, I also think that this type of design is something we're going to need to start really preparing for. We saw the storms last year and we just need to be building a more climate resilient town. So I'm glad we're thinking ahead that way because I think it's inevitable that the storm events are only going to get more severe and more common. Yeah. I'm That's just really question. happy. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was just going to make a comment. I'm just really happy this is happening because all I've been hearing about is the Leary lot for the past however many years. Yeah. So it's finally happening. It's pretty exciting. 1996 is when I believe the town bought it. So, oh, uh, my goodness. <laughs> we're, so, we're making it happen now. So when is it starting? <laughs> um, so we're expecting construction in some form to begin as early as this month. Um, it would cool. likely involve just the wiring portions of it first. Um, in terms of civil and site work, that would come after a lengthier bid process. Um, which we are eager to make sure happens during this construction season. And we know the clock is ticking on that. So definitely before summer, I would say, is is ideal. Uh, but I don't have an exact timeline for when we can pinpoint that. Okay. Andrea? I was going to ask how many um, electric vehicle chargers will there be total for this lot? lot? Good question. So there are a total of four chargers, meaning there are a total of eight ports. Uh, Four of those ports will be level two, and four of those ports will be uh, level three fast chargers. That's great. Great. And, and I think I did ask this question at the last, the beginning of the public hearing about how will people know about this? And have we, have we considered putting something on five and 10 to indicate that there are, so that'll be a draw to bring, bring people into town. Yeah, I think signage could definitely be considered. Um, I don't believe it's been part of this process, but it could absolutely, after the after the project is built, be something to add on. Um, I, I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, good. Um, there's also a lot of apps that electric vehicle users rely right. on. And so as long as we can get it registered, then people will look for chargers in the yeah. area. Um, and that would be an another way to- Yeah, sort of like gas system. buddy. Yeah, exactly. Same, same kind of thing, yeah. But signage is good too. Signage Absolutely. is clean. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> good. Wow. <laughs> Did you hear that? Signage is clean. In our rigs. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Deerfield. Come charge your car. Yes. And that stop. is what we want. <laughs> Go to our restaurant. Are you, the, are you the point person for the town? Uh, yes, I have been managing. Um, and uh, by the way, I didn't introduce myself for the for the audience. I'm Chris Nolan, Assistant Town Administrator. Um, I have been working on this project in partnership with our lead architect, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design Group. And in the audience, you'll see David Pomerantz from Rivermore Energy. They've been taking on a managerial and consultant role throughout the process. Um, it's been a fantastic team effort. And we're really happy with the design product that we've gotten and looking forward to seeing it come to life this year. And Chris, you've been doing a great job. So thank you so much for taking this on. Thank you very much. It's a really important that. project. Yes. All right. Um, so do we have, I'm going to open it up to public comment. Do we have any, anybody online? Can we expand the, um, excuse me? Oh. Just in case there are folks that want to play in. Maybe know. you could stop the screen share. Um, Unless maybe somebody has questions. I don't, know. I don't see anybody. Fran, do you have any comments? We're just listening, which is fine. <laughs> Mr. Walden, do you have any comments? Anything? No, no, no comments. I think it's going to be great. Okay, great. Thanks, Bob. 
All right, so I'm since we have no public comments, I'm going to close the public comment section of this. Okay, um, do I hear a vote? Oh, wait, do I hear a motion <laughs> to close the public so comment? So what are we mo moving? I, I make move, motion. Emily Gaylord, I move to close public comment. There you go. Uh, I second. Kathy Wittroba. Okay, all right. All in favor, Sorry. Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, aye. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Ace Mason, aye. So public comment is closed. Now, um, so this is for the site plan review yes. amendment. Yes. Yeah. Right. Got yes. This is already. Yeah, and it was a continuation right. of the public hearing right. that we had right. last month. All right. Right. So right. are there any other questions that the board has of the applicant? Yes, I have a question. Go uh, ahead, Andrea. Maintenance plan. Is there is there a well, written yeah. maintenance plan for the, for this? Uh, we do not have a written maintenance plan at this time, but one will be produced uh, during the process. And it's it, again, it's our DPW that's the agent for the right. O and M plan. Correct. And it's and in I, our proposed conditions as well. Yeah, I think that's good. I think it's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there um a, a butter notification process? Have they been notified already? Yes. Um a butters were notified um when On the, the amendment. Yes, and I think yes. I speak to that. Amy? Yes. Yes, they were notified. It's been in the paper and they were notified by mail. And Thank will, you. And will they be notified when construction starts as well or in advance? I don't believe there is a requirement that they be notified prior to construction. Um, I think we can we can work on making sure that there is sufficient outreach to make people aware with reasonable notice um, when they can expect to start seeing construction vehicles entering the site on a regular basis. Might save you a headache or two. Uh, yeah, yes, that's, that's a very good point. I'm oh, sorry. At our last meeting, we had and I. Don't remember her last name. Linda's very, very, very nice. She came and she was concerned. And I think we brought up that she's the landlord, mm -hmm. but Rachel brought up that that the um the actual tenants were not notified. And so I asked Linda, I said, please let them know and have them, you know, come to the meeting tonight. And I don't see anyone here. So maybe she's had a conversation with them. Her last but name was Kosensky. Yes, I've I've worked with Ms. Kaczynski, uh okay. fairly extensively throughout the process. We've been working to nail some of her initial concerns, and I, th I think we've come to a lot of mutually agreeable solutions. Okay, great, good. All right, okay, so are there other questions? Any more questions of well, the applicant? Her, um, Andrea's concerned about the O&M. Can we set a time or a date so that we have some sort of sense of when we could see an operations management plan? Uh, you know, maintenance plans. And I can't speak with 100% certainty, but I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't one in the stormwater report that was included in, under, with the original site plan application. Okay. Typically, we would include one in the back yeah. of there. So I, I can double check, but we may have written one already as part of that um, stormwater management plan because typically we will okay. we'll provide that. Look at All right. Yeah. It just would be good to kind of, I yeah. think, for from our point of view, just to be supportive of the town, not that we're doubting, but just so that yep. we can assure everybody on all right. of that. that it, yes, if we're going to spend money and create something new and good, we want to make sure it's made properly, yep. maintained. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Yes. Oh, Trevor. <laughs> I know maybe Chris has already had this conversation, but before I left, I just want to um, see if there's a way to, and it looked like on the plan that that sidewalk is kind of still in flux. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted that to line up. And you may have already had that discussion with whatever we plan on the common. And I know that that's mm -hmm. like shooting a dart at something that's like, but I think maybe one's going to force the other, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but just in the plan of when we redo the common, that, that sidewalk, from Cheswick's corner, mm -hmm. Leary Lock corner, over to um, over to the common is mm -hmm. somehow meshes. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, we looked into that uh, somewhat extensively after a recent select board meeting where that same topic came up. Yeah. Um, it looks like they line up perfectly as of right now. The the formatting might be slightly different between the two designs, but um, we tracked it down to exactly where they fall in relation to. 
new plan. Okay. Yeah, in, in relation to uh, where the fire hydrant is on the yes. common side, I believe, yeah. and also in relation to where the um, catch basin is on the side of Cheslick's Market, um, and, and they match up perfectly with okay. one another. That's great. I have a question. I'm not entirely sure if it's pertinent to this, but the roadway that goes Hampshire. by Hampshaw, have we determined if that is a one-way or... The anyway, north south, or is it just a one way road? Was our most recent iteration? You're talking about the new, the new exit. Yes. Um, is it just an exit, or is it an exit and an entrance? That's the question. I think it's. Yeah, I thought it was left as as a. Uh, be determined. Yeah, with traffic. <laughs> I'm trying, I, I yeah, can't I thought it was both, and yeah. if you had problems, then you change yeah. it. Yes. So, so, so the original plan is to have a two way, and if yep. that becomes problematic, then we'll change it for, for, to a one way. Yep. Yeah. So Correct. then the parking that's like I just think this section is going to need a, some review. Um, I, I think it's a tricky, really tight, tricky space right there with hot L and the parallel parking on one side, diagonal parking on the other, a sidewalk that goes across that section. Um, and it's it's not um, openly visible. It is, I just think it's a little tricky spot. I think mean, it's mm -hmm. gonna be worth some, some considerations. Yeah. yeah. And can I ask another question? So it looked like, I can't see it on this plan, but it looked like the, the entire width was 18 feet which wasn't very wide. It would make each lane pretty, what would be the width yeah. of each lane and what would be a standard width for a lane? I believe the entire width now is, yes, yeah, probably 18 feet uh. because of the need for a sidewalk on yeah. the other. The median so, lines. Yeah, so we're, um, you know, that is a, it's a narrow residential road. It's a, you know, it's, you can get it to well, you know, it's, nine foot, lanes, which is certainly doable. And, you know, if people are slowing and paying attention. Well, it would be a nine foot lane if there wasn't a median line. So there's going to be another foot in the center there, which is going to cut that down to eight feet per lane, which may even have a foot, a, foot, a foot buffer, which is now making it a seven foot lane, which is pretty tight. It's pretty narrow. I just, you know, it, it's small, narrow road that goes to a large parking lot and multiple businesses. I, I, I think it will need to be a point of concern. Does the DOT have any say on, is that part of the DOT? No, no. so that's no. that's under the jurisdiction of the town. Hmm. Has Kevin Scarborough or anybody from DPW? She, she wanted it to be a two lane way. He did. Yeah. I'm sorry, can people speak into the microphones? I can't right, hear yeah. you. That That's Trevor, he's bad like that. Bad. <laughs> my place here um i know chief wanted it to be a two-lane way we also wanted that to really take the traffic coming into the center of town to go directly in that way but um and we felt like if it was going to be one way it'd probably best that that be an exit yeah. mm -hmm. um so we wanted to kind of see how that laid out see what it looked like try it for a little bit and we may all go this isn't working this needs to be a one way but yeah. uh, but it would be it would be definitely narrow we want people five miles an hour obviously through there you know just it's a parking lot so uh not going very fast but it is something we're definitely looking at we may have to change so chief pachorik would like it as a two-way for a safety i think yeah he just issue? felt like with the way traffic moves around in town i think he he I think that was his intention. I don't quote me on that because he may have changed his mind since he's looked mm -hmm. at a different plan, but um, that that was it originally. And he felt like if it was going to be one way that I think that would be the exit. It, yeah. Yes. And if as a two way, it would prevent a bottleneck somewhere else, which is around the corner by the market. Right, right. Because right. there's that, you know, three o'clock when everybody gets out. It's backed up yeah. all the way to the high school. So. Totally. That, yeah. <laughs> Big traffic jam out there. Right, for five or ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, Rush hour. I missed it. Well, I know. <laughs> Scary. <Right. laughs> okay, I mean, that makes sense. That, that does make sense to have a two-way, and then if that does not work. I, I just think we're, we'll have to have some precautionary measures 
at that entrance and exit, like the sidewalk and just road signals is something. It's it's just a weird narrow congested space getting into it. And then you go in from a narrow congested space into a more narrow space. Which that's a, so with what a speed hump or bump? Mm. Yeah. Working it. I mean, it's, it's Let's slow it, making sure that people are still. It's in, it's an eighteen bumps. foot wide travel. Yeah. I mean, the 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 road is eighteen foot wide. We didn't have any intention of striping it, so it does okay. provide yeah. some mm -hmm. flexibility. I mean, it's okay. a wide driveway, um, and I know there's curbing on one side that supports the sidewalk. I believe the other side is probably. Um, I think we made as as a berm, as a Cape Cod berm, so that you know if. Cars need to, you know, move over a little bit. They have the ability to ride up in that curb a little bit and get around. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't, I don't think it's, you know, it's. I understand the, the appreciate the concern for speed. I think it's, you know, fairly short distance and narrow and enough going on that, you know, adding a speed bump or some other controls there would just complicate things. That there's enough going on to. It's short. Yeah. Keep people. They shouldn't need it. Yeah. Any Hopefully, don't drag racing. Right. I mean, park. how wide is Grave Street? I mean, uh, <laughs> talk about narrow yeah. streets. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it's a lot longer than this. Yeah. Mm. Any other questions of the applicant? So you'll be monitoring that, you know, as far as the two way. If you hear a bunch of complaints and stuff, you reconsider, make it one way. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I personally don't anticipate a lot of people coming into Elm Street from five and ten and making a left into that parking lot. Maybe not. I, you know, but time will tell. Okay. Other questions? Anybody? All right. Do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? Make yeah, a motion to close, close the public close hearing. The, we close the public hearing. Now we have no, to we close the public no, we, comment. Yeah, we're, close, uh, oh, public we're closing comment. public hearing. I make okay. a motion to close the public hearing. Do I hear Sylvester? I'm seconding Rachel Blaine. Okay. Kathy Wichoba. Kathy Wichoba, aye. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Okay, and now um, <laughs> now we will vote on the application. Now, and it is. Right. Uh, I site plan review. move that we accept the amended site plan review. That's Emily. This is Rachel seconded. Were you two here to right. read the conditions? Listen to you. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, I, I, you know. Since I, yeah. yeah, I think we're going to waive reading the conditions for you. And there's still the original conditions from exactly. the last. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm sure you have them all memorized. <laughs> there will be a test. <laughs> I have to. them in a file. How's that? I know that you do. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. Then, um, all right. Kathy oh. Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, aye. Rachel Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Slavester, aye. And Denise Mason, aye. So thank you. Thank you all very much. We are excited and we, we can't are. wait. I can't. Yeah, we are as well. Yeah, this is good. We, we need to have a ribbon cutting. <laughs> okay. Seriously. Yeah. Yes. No, it'll be great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Can't wait to park. Thanks, there. Chris. <laughs> the parking lot is a mess. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Bob. We're all done. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, for Good night. Good night. night. And Amy, oh, oh, do I hear? Wait a minute. Oh, gosh, a minute. I'm sorry. I closed the hearing. I'm jumping the gun here. We've got the rest of the meeting. All right. Any old business? Um, VESH update? What's the update on that? Well, the VASH update is that I think Amy did speak with John Furman. They are planning on doing the parking lot. And that's all I know. Amy, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, John Furman said he thought they were making uh, some sounds like they were getting ready to do it. But that's about it. I did write them directly and never heard back. So, you know. They, they've got a year. Okay. Yeah, the sound is really bad. So, okay. Landfill solar update. Anything on that? I know it's on the list. I, I, I think, I'm not sure whether the town and um, whether they've come to an agreement on the lease. Does Chris know? 
I don't know. Okay. Well, yeah. La last I knew, they were uh, still having discussions about the lease. Okay. Great. Thanks. And the 901 River Road Solar Annual Report, have we received that? Uh, yes, we have. Um, and I am sorry, I think I might have neglected to put it in your packages. So I will send that out to you tomorrow. Okay, great. great Thank you. Um, do we have any other business not reasonably anticipated? Nope. Okay, we did get a lot of a budding town hearing notices. That was very exciting. <laughs> All right. Do, do we? Do we <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Do we have any reports? The open space. Committee continues to work on trying to figure out how to permanently preserve some town owned pieces of land. It's very complex, apparently. We um, Members of the Open Space Committee have met with the uh, CONSCOM. I don't know the result of that. I was afraid I was out of town. And several of us on the Open Space Committee attended a mass um, land trust conference and learned some interesting things about um, about ways to preserve land and uh, do mapping, et cetera, uh, for, for trails, so. Great, thank you. Kathy? Uh, Community Preservation Committee is forwarding the 1888 building um, application to the fall town meeting. Um, so which one is 1888? That's it's, um, senior center. old senior center cool. so th they're not quite done with the, the plants so um so that's still on the table and senior housing yeah that's moving forward so that's exciting mm -hmm. um and also the community preservation committee is going to have a public hearing in the fall probably to tell people in the town what it is we do because I think a lot of people don't really know mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah so. and there was um, because I did attend the wait you're on the CPC yes. too. okay so I did attend that meeting and one thing that was brought up was a painting yeah. to um, to be restored and I think that the, I mean, you should read oh, this. Can, yeah, I mean, I can speak yeah. to it. I was just figuring since we didn't approve it. Is, no, it's fine. I, but, I, I, think uh, it's, I think it's important for it, people to know. I think, you know, it's it's when you're making these decisions, you have to look at what are the regulations and the laws around it. And unfortunately, the application really wasn't complete. So um, it had private ownership, which is a problem. If you're giving taxpayer money to a private entity that doesn't have any public benefit. And since there's no place to hang the painting, mm -hmm. there's no public benefit. Now you could give it to the town and then there's public benefit because the taxpayer owns the painting, right? Even if you're not hanging it up, if the town would accept it. But if it's a private organization, it has to show public benefit, which they couldn't do. So. We had to turn that down, so we really we didn't approve any applications this year. We had another application for the Tri Town Beach for a dock, but there not that application wasn't complete either, and they didn't have approval from Waitley. Uh, so anyway, we hope so you that had no approved. You're not endorsing any budgets. I think yeah. unfortunately not. until until the 1888 in the fall. We hope that that will yeah. be approved. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're working with them on that. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. And we also are going to town yeah. meeting with a change in the CPC bylaw because right now one of the statutory requirements is have someone represent housing from the regional housing authority it's and there is nobody time. because it's nobody from happen. Deerfield is on that. So we're changing that language, oh, which cool. small towns like us can do since we don't have our own housing authority to name a resident in town to oh. represent housing. So you know, yeah. Well, that, that there'll be any, yeah, yeah, because yeah. otherwise, also there's also Mike, quorum Mike. issues. There's also quorum issues, and right now we right. don't have anybody from the rec department that will attend our meetings. So oh. that's huh. that's 
one down every every time every yeah. we need two down yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah kathy i just wanted to add some little clarification on that painting it was approximately what was it eight by six it was eight by 16 feet okay and the first part was close to i don't know it was three thousand something close to four thousand dollars and that that was just preliminary to possibly stabilize it and then they would have to raise a lot more money but but i think one of the big issues is that there was no place to hang it yeah and we asked mr newman from pvma and he said, no, nah, too small. So, you know, that's part that's part of what what the applicant needs to do is to say, where is this going to be? And we thought it would, I'm sorry, I mean, I'm not on the committee, but I did speak. And I said, I think it was premature and I felt uncomfortable with the application because there was not a permanent location to house that painting. And I don't think taxpayers want to pay for something that they don't know what's going to happen. Right, right. we, we so, had told him that too yeah. many uh, times yeah. and he still couldn't oh, get yeah. that, he couldn't yeah. secure a place yeah. for it. It's, it's a it, hard painting to find well, a place for. I mean, it's a religious painting. It was a religious. So uh, have they approached any of the town churches? Yes, they, they didn't did want it. No. Mm. Yeah. Well, originally, that when the church closed down, I think in 2009, the painting went elsewhere, and then the gentleman who bought, you know, he searched it out and bought it. I see. I see. And it's lay, it's in the church right now, but that'll have to go because senior housing yeah. is fine. Anyway, I mean, it, it was got, in a got, auction house yeah. for years. And and someone in, from Texas bought it, but they never retrieved it. So he ended up getting it back and hoped to have yeah. it. You know, because it has historical value. Sure, sure, the sure. painter is, is well known. Yeah. And, uh, yes. So yes. you could get around the church versus state issue on the historical aspect, mm -hmm. but if you don't have a place to hang it, you don't have public right. benefit, you can't spend mm -hmm. public right. money on right. something that's privately owned. Yeah. So no public benefit. So, right. yeah. That's what they were saying. I just have that's a couple things. Yeah. Um, I'm on the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Committee. And so we've we've had to do three trainings, which have been really exciting, and and so we had you to do. Hero. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Carolyn owes me on that one. <laughs> Hope you're listening. But, um, <laughs> but at any rate, after doing that, then we'll be eligible to get more money, and you know, as we all know, we need culvert repairs. So so that's in process. Um, also, a couple. Close to two years ago, we did get a grant grant for shared streets and spaces to put crosswalks and beacons. Now that we have a new planning planning guy, Christopher Dunn, he's working on that. So I've been working with him and, and FERCOG to actually move that project forward. So that's really good. So that will be happening. Um, the 1821, I don't know if anyone's been there, but soon it will house the, the temporary library. I think I mentioned this last time, and it just, it looks so good. Oh, my gosh. And Tim Hilchey personally put in the floor in the kitchen. Unbelievable. It looks so good. What did he do? Tim oh, did the laid floor. the floor. In, so it's that's pretty exciting. And so when the when the library moves out, then it will be a community space. Sure. So that's really cool. And that saved the town $4,200 on that floor, because that's what it would have cost to install it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Tim's done a lot of he work. He needs a gold star. I know. He does. Sure. And what else? Um, oh, and then I'm on the CIPC committee, but we just make recommendations to finance. So it'll be really interesting at town meeting to see what happens with that. But yeah, but that's that's all that's going on in town. And I guess our next meeting is May 6th. When are allowed? Yes. Town. Annual Town meeting, meeting is, oh, what is April 29th. April 29th, 29th. and Town election. Uh, oh, so May 6th cannot be the next meeting because that's that's um, Town election. That's Town election. Yeah. Amy, did you hear that? Town, um, um, Andrea. May 6th, Town election. Oh, my. That's right. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> I thought this was on the agenda to discuss last meeting, and well, I think you discussed it, and we did one. choose an alternative date. I'll have to look at that. I'm sorry. I was just uh, looking at the calendar and forgetting that. So um, look for... So yeah. I will look for what decision you guys made last meeting, and I will yeah, let you know. You know what, know. Amy? 
I'm having a really difficult time hearing you. The sound is absolutely horrible tonight, so we can discuss this later. But um, so we should probably determine now when our next meeting would be. How would May th move it to the next, the there next Monday? Monday. Will that work? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. I won't be on. <laughs> well, right. Whoever gets elected, yes, to planning yeah. board will attend then. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So let's move it to May thirteenth then. Please. Yep, I got that. All right. Well, thank you, Andrea, for <laughs> figuring that one out. Okay, so I get I think we're all set. I make motion to adjourn. I second. Kathy Latroba. Kathy Latroba, aye. Rachel, Rachel Blaine, Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrea Leapson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amy. And we will talk later.